Hello, hello, and welcome to the new wellness show where I interview people that can help us with our health and wellness. And today we are with Sean Olson, and we're going to have a look at exercise without equipment or time commitment. So there's six tips. Six tips to activate your muscle in only one or two minutes per hour. So this is really, really interesting. And let me just tell you a little bit about Sean and then we're going to hear from him. So Sean is a realistic health improvement expert. He helps people get and stay in shape in a realistic way that they can stick to for life. With nearly a decade of experience as a personal fitness trainer, Sean helps hundreds of uh, people create and implement healthy lifestyle routines. Now he specializes in programs that allow you to lose the weight you want without having to go to the gym or to stick to a crazy diet. So if you can dedicate one or two minutes per hour, to your health, then you can create a life-changing transformation. So let's hear it from Sean Olson. Welcome, Sean. Fabulous. Oh, thank you for the great introduction. I appreciate that. So definitely been uh, very, very involved in the fitness industry, really my whole life, but more as a professional for Oh, at least the last 15 years. Um, so I used to do personal training in the gym. And so I've spent a lot of time in the gym and in the athletic scene. Um, I did a, a various number of sports um, all the way up through high school and some into college and have, have seen the world of fitness from the athletic side, from the structural bodybuilding implementation, all the way down to just somebody wanting to feel better. That's given me the ability to break down the ways that people are successful and the ways that they fail. And so the systems that I've created over the last decade have helped leverage both of those points. So we can avoid the failure problem areas and, and really focus on the things that help get people success. And so creating these daily habits and these yeah. lifestyle routines, and I say the word routine over and over and over, habit over and over and over, because the results that we have in our health is simply a compilation of the things that we do consistently. So, so doing them daily has the biggest impact, but if you're doing things most of the time, um, that's the result that you're going to look for. So what we're talking about today is exercise. Now, as yeah. soon as you hear the word exercise, almost immediately there's some kind of equipment picture in your head, whether it's yeah. I got to have something at home or I got to go to the gym to use something or whatever it may be. So equipment is, is one of the fail points that we use as a reason why we don't exercise. I don't have the right equipment. Oh, the equipment's available for me at the gym, but I got to drive out there or whatever it may be. So, so being able to recognize that you don't need anything to actually exercise eliminates one of those reasons why you're not going to do it. The next part of our title is time commitment. People are like, oh, it takes me way too long to exercise. I don't have an hour to exercise. Yeah. Well, I'm going to show you how to do it in one to two minutes an hour. Okay. okay. So it, it, nobody doesn't have one to two minutes. We spend more time than that scrolling on our phone oh, you know, yeah. all the time. <laughs> Um, and so we're going to break down six different pieces that, that you can leverage to activate your muscles in those one to two minutes so that we don't need equipment. We're not worried about how long this is going to take. You probably won't even get real tired or sweaty. Okay. <laughs> so, so you're going to be able to actually activate your muscles, but give them plenty of time to rest and recover um, between those activation points, which is different than how most people exercise. Normally we go in and we dedicate 30 minutes or an hour and we're doing all our exercise for the whole day in one short grip and we just exhaust ourselves and then we're like recovering the rest of the day and tomorrow we're really sore because we worked really hard all at once and um, it, it creates another reason why we don't do it consistently. Mm. So consistency is the most important factor when it comes to your health maintenance. When you have consistency as a baseline that you never go away from, the amount of effort that you put in can vary, but if you never go away from it, then you maintain a baseline of health that's easy 
to adjust up and down from. But if you come from a nothing to try to get to something, that is the hardest point. To go from zero to start is yeah. the hardest point because we are retraining the way that you think and choose and decide. So today we're going to focus on exercise. In the future weeks coming up, we are going to talk about some mindset things, the structure yeah. behind why you're successful. So we're not going to go too far into that today, but the exercise piece is going to be very important, again, for the consistency side. Hmm. I tell people that I don't even work out. And they ask me, well, how do you stay in shape if you don't work out? Well, I have bursts of movement, but I don't really consider it a workout. Because to me, a workout is that extended period of time where we yeah. get tired and all those sorts of things. So we're retraining the way that we look at and label the things that we do that contribute to a constant good health. Okay, so let's get right into this here. So number one is if you are going to do some sort of exercise or sort of structured movement, you can call it whatever you want. Exercise is a cooler term. So we need to choose the exercises that we're going to do if we want to have this in place. All right. So the, the system that I've put together and we're going to give you guys access to this at the very end. So if you stay with us here, we're going to give you some cool bonuses at the end of our talk today. All right. So for me, I recommend one to two exercises per day that you choose from and that you designate at the beginning of the day. Wow. Announcing that to yourself that here are the exercises that I'm going to do today, whether it's one or two, don't choose more than two. Okay, okay. we'll get to that here in just a minute. That you can do Monday through Friday. All right, we are very creatures of habit. Most of us have a Monday through Friday structure where this is our mind's productive time. Yeah. The weekends are like already in our head is the lazy time. So it's really hard to get people to work, you know, Wednesday through Sunday. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. so Monday through Friday specifically, um, for the most part, if you have a regular job and you, you know, work Monday through Friday, those are the days when things are the craziest. And so it's even harder to dedicate that time to, to exercise when you already have all these obligations on your plate. Mm. So being able to steal one to two minutes per hour a couple of times a day where you put in a structured movement that doesn't take any time and doesn't really get you tired, but it does activate your muscles. Okay, those are the ways that you will be able to change the way that your body starts to react all the time by putting in small pieces of attention and movement and, and interaction in ways that you aren't currently doing. Okay, because we simply don't think about it. It's not part of how we operate. Yeah. So if you have two exercises um, as a max per day and you have Monday through Friday, we're going to have an idea of what it is that we're going to get done throughout the week. Okay, at least yeah. movement wise. So you can have a couple of, you know, exercises on Monday, maybe one is upper body, one is lower body, you know, and you can change it up throughout the week, depending on what it is that you want to do. Again, if you stay till the end, we're going to give you a little more structure that you can follow. But step number one is to choose the exercises that you're going to do for, for five days of the week. Okay. Step number two is to set a goal. Now I make this super easy where you cannot fail unless you choose to not act. Yeah. The only way to fail is not to act. Okay. okay. The quality of action doesn't matter. The fact that you act is all that matters, yeah. right? So our goal is going to be able to do one rep, one repetition one. of one set five times a day. Okay, so you've got your exercise. Say, say, say it's Monday and we're going to do push-ups today. Okay. So, okay, so push-ups is an exercise you don't have to really think too hard about. You probably know how to do a push-up. Hopefully at some point in your life you've tried one, okay? <laughs> but the goal is to create a consistency habit. I am not concerned about how many push-ups you can do. I am concerned that you commit to the fact of getting down to the floor and doing your best for one. And if that's all that you're able to do in that moment, go ahead and stand back up and, and be on your way. Okay. okay? So the good. goal is one repetition for five sets. Now, the reason I say five sets is 
you can space this out throughout the day. So for me, I'm doing one set at the top of the hour, five different times throughout the day. So sometimes you'll be able to do that five hours in a row and you get your five sets done. Sometimes the day gets a little bit crazy and you just don't do the thing and you know, you have to get it done later on. Okay. Yeah, so or you're out somewhere and it doesn't fit. So yeah, you know, top of the hour at the grocery store is kind of weird to go down and do push-ups. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, <laughs> so again, we understand that life can, can have things that can get in the way of this. So what I recommend is, is to try and dedicate to the act of five sets throughout the day. That's the commitment. And if during that, that set, you only have to commit to one rep, then it's not an ability thing. We're eliminating you saying, I can't do that many. One, okay. One of every single set. Now here's the thing. The reason why I say only commit to one is because we have a hard time with just a little bit especially here in America. We, we love lots. <laughs> we're, we're excessive people. So if we get down there and we do one push up, you're probably going to talk yourself into two. Oh, I'm already down here. I can do another one. And they're like, Oh, well, I might as well just do another one. And then you've done three or four or five and you're like, Oh, well, okay. It wasn't really that hard, but getting down to do the one is the hard part. So the commitment that you never fail to get down and do the one. Mm. Maybe your day is absolutely nuts and you literally don't have enough time to do 10 full push-ups. The amount of time that it takes to stop and do one and get back up is probably less than five seconds. If you're really slow 10, if you do not have 10 seconds in your day, we need bigger help. OK, so so that's the thing is, is, is removing all of the mental blocks yeah. of initiating the exercise movement structure. Don't focus on how much am I going to do? How many calories am I going to burn? Who's going to see me do it? Nobody cares how many pushups you can do unless you tell them how many pushups you can or can't do. Yeah. So this is a structure for you to get committed to the process. OK, so you got your exercises lined out. You have a goal of five sets throughout the day, and we're going to do at least one rep per set. Now, number three is when it starts to get a little bit more customizable, okay? I recommend that in order to give yourself a better reminder to do your set, that you set an alarm on your phone. Now, for me, if you guys watched last week, we talked about water drinking, this is just like exercise. You got to do it consistently and sometimes you forget. So I recommend to set an alarm at least during your work hours for every hour at the top of the hour. All right. So I start my day at 7 a.m. I'm done at 3 p.m. I have alarms that go off the top of the hour every single hour with a different ringtone. So it's a different attention getting uh, sound every time. I don't get used to the same one over and over. And this is when I perform my exercise and my water drinking. I just combine the thing. Uh -huh. Drinking water also doesn't take very much time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so I can I can drop and I can do my, my set of an exercise in 30 to 60 seconds, yeah. stand up and take another 10 or 15 seconds, drink in some water. We'll, we'll cheers to that. Yeah. <laughs> and then I get back to my day. So in, in one to two minutes... I can do some very key pieces to activate myself and keep my focus on consistency around my health maintenance because health is a forever topic. We don't get healthy for a short period of time. We don't just want to be healthy until summer is over and then we have to put our clothes back on and go inside for winter. We don't want to just be healthy for the event that we're going to. Maybe it's a wedding or whatever it may be. We, we want to be healthy all the time. Yeah. And so we have to consistently take actions that allow for that. So this structure is set up in the beginning as a Monday through Friday routine. Five days a week, we're committing to five sets at one rep. And we're going to have alarms that go off during our Monday through Friday work hours. And just pick one of those times. That's the easiest way to do it. 
Now, if you got a real strict work environment, maybe you're in an office and you wear a pantsuit or something like that, it might actually be hard to move in that sort of thing. Or maybe your boss doesn't want to see you doing push-ups consistently. Well, whatever. Okay. So again, you can adjust for this. So if you need to do a set right when you wake up in the morning and then one set before you get in the car to go to work, and then you do one set at lunch and then two after you get home, it's up to you. Set, okay. Yeah. But committing to the goal of at least one rep five times, you will automatically be focused on it and you will automatically challenge yourself in time, okay, to do more quantity. Yeah. You can get better and you can do more all the time, but you'll never do any of it unless you commit to the act first, okay? Mm -hmm. So step number, step number three is to set an alarm through your Monday through Friday work schedule at the top of every hour from the time you start work till the end and pick five of those to choose for the exercise piece. Okay. Now this is all well and good. And in the beginning, we always have really good intentions. Who's ever, who's ever like started a new year's resolution. How many of you have finished it? Okay. <laughs> They're almost impossible because we lose motivation. Yeah. We have a lot of things built up in our head in the first day or two, or maybe a week if you're super motivated or whatever. You're, you're paying attention to the thing and doing the thing. But it's very easy because what we're doing is we are restructuring focus points and we are redesigning the way that you choose the activities throughout your day. It takes a while. Yeah. Most people say 21 to 30 days to create a habit. For mm -hmm. me, it's realistically more like 60 to 90 days yeah. to really make it stick. Okay. That first 30 days, you've got to be paying attention and consciously choose every day. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is we're going to add another piece that helps you stay on point for this is tracking what you're doing. Okay. So, so again, writing down the number of reps that you did each day. Number one is it allows you to go back and look and you can reference you compared to you. So when you only compare to you, then it doesn't matter if anybody else sees you do push-ups or if you're doing as many as them, you're doing as many as you because yeah. you're only competing with you. Right? So you can look back at the progress, but number two is it creates an accountability timeline that motivates you for the future. If you have done it consistently for the last seven days on day eight, you're not going to want to break your streak. If you yeah. can see that every single day I have done this and I've been committed and yeah. I'm doing the thing. Mm -hmm. so, so it's like the X on the calendar. I'm marking off the days until my vacation and whatever. The tracking mm -hmm. of the thing keeps it top of mind. Yes. And if you look back and you say, okay, on my first seven days, every single time I got down and I did one push up. And then I did one squat and then I did one crunch or one plank or whatever it may be is the exercise. You're probably going to challenge yourself that on day eight, which starts week two or however you frame it in your head that I'm going to go for two every time. Uh huh. Yeah. Don't miss the one. Okay. Two is better than one for sure, but don't miss the one. Okay. So we just have to keep that consistency, but the tracking keeps you accountable and keeps you motivated to yourself. Now, if you post that accountability thing up on your family's refrigerator on a magnet, then everybody else can also see. And then your family's going to start cheering you on. And your kids are going to say, hey, dad, how come you didn't do your thing yesterday? There's no X on here. There's no number that shows what you did. Oh. I've had my daughter do those things to me. I do things very consistently. I go for a walk every day. And one day I didn't go for my walk and my daughter was here. And she's like, dad, you didn't go for your walk. How come? I was like, well, I don't know. I just haven't gone on it. She's like, well, do you want me to go with you? And I was like, oh, sure. Let's go for a walk. And so you'll, you'll start to have that accountability from around you. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so if you track what it is and share it with the people yeah. that are around you, mm -hmm. they will keep you more motivated to do things mm -hmm. for them than you will for yourself a lot of times. All right. So it's yeah. very important to make sure that you're tracking your progress. Yeah. Um, so that's step four. Step five is, yes, we've gone through Monday through Friday. We've, we've tackled our work week. We've hit our five sets through the week. But on the weekend, um, we, we kind of get into lazy mode, 
right? We want to gear down a little bit. We've been pushing hard all week and we don't want to kill ourselves and we don't want to have a bunch of stuff to pay attention to in our fitness game and blah, blah, blah. The weekends have always been a struggle for people. Even when I worked in the gyms, if I ever scheduled a personal training session on the weekend, the show up rate was about 50, 50. Oh. On the days of the week, Monday through Friday, I could get 80, 90% show up rate. On the weekend, I was lucky at 50% because people just have other things going on. They have vacations and they have events and they have laundry and they sleep in and whatever, yeah. and whatever it comes down to be. So, so for the weekend, step number five is to do one set. We're going to take the exercises that you did throughout the week. So if you only have one, that means you have five exercises. And we're going to do one set of those all in a row. So I'm going to do one push-up and one squat and one crunch and one calf raise and one bicep curl, and then I'm done. Okay. Now, again, this is committing to the minimum so that we create the habits of when. When is the hardest part? Mm -hmm. And I, I want you guys to understand this. The reason I put the, the bar so low for the goal for you to achieve as one is because if you have something that is so easy to do that you don't have an excuse to not do it and that you can can always increase from, but that you never fail to do that thing, mm. it's a 100% commitment yeah. to exercise. Mm -hmm. The amount that you do, you do not have to commit to as long as it's at least one. So yeah. on, on the weekend, we, yeah. we combine our exercises. We do them in what's called a superset. So you do one push-up, and then you go right into the next exercise, which could be a squat without any rest in between. Now, hopefully the push-up didn't get you too tired that you got to rest for the squat. But, but the point is to do them all in an order yeah. of back-to-back, of -back, and then you're done as a minimum. Now, if you decide you want to do two push-ups before you do your next exercise, that's okay. But get at least one, one rep of every exercise for at least one set. Okay. And again, if you want to do a second set, totally up to you. Okay. All right. So on Saturday, we're going to get one super set is what it's called of okay. all of the week's exercises for at least one set. All right. On Sunday... Don't exercise. Okay. Isn't that exciting to purposely be lazy? You schedule in laziness. People don't think about it like that. They're like, oh, I got a whole bunch of days where I don't go to the gym and then twice a week I get there. Well, you've also scheduled in laziness just way too much. Mm. <laughs> okay. So we want to make it okay to be lazy on purpose. And, and I don't want to say lazy. This is recovery day. Yeah. So especially in the beginning, if you are coming from no exercise at all and you do even one repetition five times, you're probably going to feel it tomorrow. It's stuff your body isn't used to. So as you get used to it and the next day you don't feel it at all, maybe take a note on your sheet if you want to, or at least a mental note that says, hey, that didn't really do a lot for me. I could probably do a little bit more. But you have overcome the fact of... I need to do all these things in a certain way that I've had in my head previously in order for this to have any benefit. Hmm. Because here's the thing, guys, okay, before we get to number six, the reason for Monday through Friday and the weekend set and all of the consistency stuff that I talk about is because when it comes time to go do other stuff, number one is you want to keep yourself in a shape where you're ready for real life. Number two is that when you do extra things in real life that tax your body in any physical way, let those be the extra, not the thing. Now, we, we are creating a foundation of consistency so that we stay at a level of ability so that when we go in and we need to lift the grandkids and run around in the backyard with them or carry the groceries in from the car or walk up a flight of stairs or whatever, whatever the functional life activity is, we're not falling apart in the thing. We're less likely to injure ourselves. We can perform at a decent way. Um, but when we do those things, 
number one, they're not hard for us, but number two, they're just extra movement on top of what we're already doing. Mm -hmm. So now instead of these being a negative, it's an additional positive. So we're creating that consistency that we rely on and we don't stray from that we can maintain for the rest of our lives. Guys, how many times have you ever heard, I have, I have a 90 year exercise plan. <laughs> Nobody does. They don't yeah. even have a one year exercise plan. Everything is as short as we can make it. Yeah. I got, I got a 30 day challenge myself going on right now for walking. We walk every single day for 30 days. That's the challenge. That sounds so simple, but it's a challenge to create the consistency. Yeah. So, so you can build up to better performance, but only if you consistently perform. All right. So, so now we've gone through step number five. Do you have any more questions? Cause I'm, I'm very excited about number six, but I don't want to jump into this yet. Okay. Well, what about, because you mentioned push-ups and sit-ups and so what are the exercise that you recommend doing? Okay. And, and so you suggested that we do like, uh, we choose like push-ups Okay, so I'll stop you there. I, all of today, and then the tomorrow, answer to your yeah, the answer to your question is actually going to be provided when I go over number six topic. Excellent. Here. Okay. <laughs> so, so number six is we are going to give you guys an actual workout routine that you can follow. So oh, it okay. gives you all the exercises. So I'm going to give you ten of them. So this is actually going to, if you want to use all of them in one week, you can, or if you want to separate them, you can use five in the first week and then a different five in the next week. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this allows you to kind of mix and match those depending on what your current fitness level is, mm -hmm. but the structure is the same. Sean, it's, it's important to <laughs> alternate and not to just say, oh, I'm going to take the push up and I don't, I do only push-ups? Is it? Yes. No, that's a great do? question. Yes. Yeah. So, so I actually do not repeat exercises myself more than once every two weeks. Okay. Now, not to say that's how it has to be, but that's just how I've put it together for myself. I only do each muscle group once per week. So for example, there's multiple muscle or uh, multiple exercises that'll work on the chest. Mm -hmm. So maybe one week it's push up and the next week it's, you know, a, a fly press or something to that effect. All so, right. yeah. so there are different exercises that I do use equipment for, but only because I'm at a point where I need it. Um, so for you guys, we're giving you uh, or equipment free exercises that you can use to, to again, yes, stretch it out over one to two weeks. Um, but don't repeat the same muscle groups more than once per week, especially when you're in the beginning. It just, it doesn't give enough recovery time. Okay. Um, oh, if yeah. you're, if you're in a fairly decent shape and you want to hit the muscle group twice in a week, that's as max as I would recommend more than that. And you're just, you're keeping it in a breakdown state too much and you want to allow it enough time to re to rest and recover and rebuild. So, so, so for you guys that are here and you've been with us, thank you first of all for hanging out with us. We appreciate you listening to us talking about this, this top of the hour exercise stuff. But if you want to go to the new wellness.com slash go, um, but the new wellness.com slash go is actually going to give you three free things. So we're going to over deliver on this for you today. Yes, you're going to get the exercises and the whole structure of how to implement them. So that will be one of the things that we're giving you. But we're also going to give you an included meal plan. So again, we're going to go over the details of this meal plan next week, um, but you can get in it early if you really want to get in on this. Um, go over to the newwellness.com slash go. So you guys are going to get the exercises. We're also going to give you the nutrition plan that will give you... An, an idea of how to structure your meals for an entire day. Um, and then we're also going to give you guys a mindset reset. So this is also something we're going to discuss in the future weeks as we come up is again, how to structure the way that you make these choices and what it is that you focus on because the choices that you make determine the actions you take and that determines the results that you get. Yes. All right. So you can have the whole structure, but if you're not set up mentally to implement it, it doesn't really help. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to work on these three focus pieces for you. So if you guys want to head over to the new wellness.com slash go, that's going to give you a download option. You'll be able to get in there for free. 
give you these pieces and you can start implementing them right away. So hopefully you guys get a, a access to that um, so that you can get started on this. And that's the thing guys is the health is not time-based. So you don't need to wait until Monday to start. Yesterday is Tuesday, tomorrow's Wednesday, but yeah. days are days. So if you just start tomorrow, I'm not saying you have to get all five sets in for this week to count. Every single repetition that you do mm -hmm. counts towards your health. It yes. doesn't matter what day you start on. We're going to just continue for the rest of your life anyway. Exactly. So, so get your, get your, your access set up today, get those pieces downloaded. So you have the things in front of you and start tomorrow. You don't have to kill yourself. It's probably late tonight, you know, like gear yourself up for it, but make that commitment that starting tomorrow, I'm going to have my alarm set up. I'm going to be prepared with the exercise that I'm going to do. I'm already giving it to you. So you just choose one and yeah. do one repetition when your first alarm goes off. Break that initial weirdness because it'll be weird, especially if you're not used to doing push-ups. You know, hide somewhere. Don't let anybody see you do it. <laughs> Go in your bathroom if you have to. It's okay. Uh, but, but make sure that you commit to the act. Because that consistency, guys, is the only piece that you will struggle with. Once you get past that as being a regular thing that you do, and you no longer make the choice about whether or not you're going to do it, that's when you start to accelerate in the positives. You will automatically be able to do more just because you've consistently done it, even if you don't do that much. Yes. When I first started doing these processes, it was because I started working from home. Now, I know you work from home as well, Mary, and, yeah. and, and because of COVID, this has happened um, across the globe. Yes. And so when I, when I first started working from home, I went from this personal training career to taking over um, a roofing company is very physically active. And then I sat in a chair mm. and I, I worked on the computer and I was there for 10 to 12 hours a day. And I gained 50 pounds in my first year and a half working from home. Yeah. And so it was, it was a lot of change that I had to implement myself because I had always worked out and I had always been physically active. And then I went to a place where that was no longer part of my regular lifestyle. Mm. I didn't have the time to get to the gym and I wasn't motivated to work out at home and all this kind of stuff. So, so I let myself get to a place where I no longer was comfortable with myself. I was getting tired walking up the stairs, you know, so I know how that works. My knees were starting to hurt. Oh. You know, I, I was having a hard time even tying my shoes, bending down to tie my shoes. My stomach was too fat and I just couldn't do it. So I had to hold my breath to tie my shoes and just all kinds of crazy stuff was really starting to impact how I was able to live my life. Yeah. And so I had to break down what can I do? without all these other things that are getting in the way that I'm not able to do it the way that I used to. And so this system that I've created now is designed specifically to eliminate all of those pieces that stopped me from having fitness be a regular part of my life again. Even though I knew how it all worked, just having the knowledge is not enough. You can know everything in the world and still oh, yeah. So you have to have a structural system and you have to have people around you that will help keep you accountable. So that is another piece that if you guys are looking for, you know, fitness minded people and people who are wanting to stay healthy, we also have a great group of um, people around for that. So again, if you're looking for help, the very first place is the new wellness.com slash go get your structure downloaded and you can start with that piece. And if you got more questions, we're, we're definitely around for that. Oh, wow. Sean, that's exciting. Really. All of this amazing information today, it's very encouraging because I know most people are just the same as me. When you, talk, when you say the word exercise, I go, oh, you made it really simple and achievable. Just one little step at a time. And consistency is key in, in everything that we do, whatever it is. Consistency is key. We're all the same. You, let's say you start your, your thing, your exercise or whatever. You start sometimes and then as soon as you miss one day or two, then 
now it's just getting a little bit bumpy and yeah. so we're doing this at one or two minutes per hour that makes it very very simple i love it i love it sean yes it's really awesome now the new wellness.com slash go has got all of the information your exercise meal plan what else again sean uh, there is also a mindset reset program there that'll talk a little bit about goals and structural choice. Oh, yes. Excellent. Yes. The next couple of weeks we're we're going to also dive into uh, the nutrition side of things, the nutrition plan um, and why I don't use the word diet um, no. as, as well as the mindset structure um, and some of the pieces that are involved in that. We're going to go over both of those in the next two weeks. So we got lots of good stuff. Excellent. there. That's awesome. Thank you so much for all this amazing information today, Sean. And let's go and implement it. And let's get committed, everyone. Thank you for being here with us. And we'll see you again next week. You got it. Bye, everybody. Have a great week, everybody. Sean, thank you. Bye.